Impact Plus. Experience Impact Wrestling like never before. Ken transitioned over, he was a trailblazer. It was guys like him or like a Tank Abbott. They were the very few that came over and crossed over in our business. Other guys didn't do it. Now it's a little more common, and I think that's because of guys like Ken that opened that pathway for like a, you know, a Brock Lesnar to go back and forth. Um, so yeah, Ken started that trend. That's the last time you cut a promo in been a long time. Well, actually, I did one in Australia, but yeah, I did one in Australia. And, uh, I actually cut one on Dan Severn a week ago, two, uh, yeah, about a week ago. And you know, we did, me and Severn did a 40 minute Broadway. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, hey, let's go try to put that promo together. The first time I ever became familiar with Ken Shermock, I was actually looking at wrestling VHS tapes, I'll never forget, in Canada at Dumbo Video. And right beside it, there was this thing, Ultimate Fighting Championship. And I was like, I gotta check this out, it's in the wrestling section. Growing up in Canada, you watch a certain type of wrestling and, and what was available to me. And it was very, very over the top. And when I got to see guys that wrestled as if it was real, you know, and, and again, I, I consider myself an athlete. I can consider pro wrestlers athletes. But to see what he brought to the table, it was just like that intensity was so much different. Everything he did looked like it was like a struggle and the intent was to harm someone. Even if he was a good guy, the, the intent with his body language and his facial expressions were just he wanted to inflict pain. And to me, that that spoke to me greater than anything else could in wrestling. So he's definitely, I think, in that in that genre of wrestling that I like, like those guys like Stan Hansen and, and uh, Terry Gordy and Dr. Dusty Williams, those guys that went to Japan and had such a great career. Like, you know, he's somebody that I'm surprised didn't have that huge run in Japan after he was done with WWE. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm glad he's here with Impact because, as I said, I think he has a huge, a huge staple and a huge cornerstone of the market of those former athletes that came to wrestling and really made it successful. What's up, man? See, everybody's popping. The Rock got involved in the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, that, was <laughs> that was a good treat. Do you all come be Fast and Furious 17? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just, you know, don't forget me. I gotta work on this program. Right, no worries, you, brother. Likewise, buddy. Likewise. Yeah. back memories you know so, yeah just kind of reminiscing a little bit so and I'm, I'm excited about tonight too this is a it's a drug I mean once you hear that crowd chant your name you'll never ever want to let it go because it is it's just a feeling that you can't really explain to someone kind of at the uh, almost like standing on the edge of a cliff and the adrenaline's pumping right that's kind of where I'm at right now. Where it's like, I realize that I'm standing here and there's a lot of excitement getting ready to happen. And I'm gonna be a part of that. I think for me, um, it's a challenge. I mean, fighting I was good at, man. I just, I don't know, I was just really good at it all the time. Pro wrestling challenges me, you know? It really does, it challenges me to be a great athlete, a tremendous um, athlete. And then also to be able to speak well, talk well, uh, and be able to, 
I don't know, like, kind of carry storylines. I mean, wrestling's probably one of the most difficult things in the world to do because there's so many facets to it that you have to be good at in order for you to be really popular. So it's a challenge, and I've always said to myself, I'm gonna constantly keep challenging myself in life to be better. And so wrestling's one of those things where I believe that it challenges me at the pace I'm at in my life. And so I'm here not just to be good, but to be great. And uh, I won't stop until I'm the best. started at UFC and everything, man. Keep going, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's actually a legit pleasure to meet you. You still look great. Thank you, man. We'll do a full body real quick. Having Ken Shamrock here as a part of Impact Wrestling is one of those things. I mean, anywhere he goes, one, he adds legitimacy. Like, you see it when he walks around. It's like, even the people in our locker room are superstars, turn and they're a little bit in awe. I haven't said hi to him yet because I'm, I'm scared. Because, like, Ken Shamrock to me was, again, the baddest man alive you know what I mean like that's not a gimmick he is a badass motherfucker and he's such a legend to me and I can't work up the courage to say hi to him you know I feel like a little kid again hey what's up hey, hey, hey Kevin how are you brother good to see you you too my friend uh, uh, and how are you good brother how are you doing it's, it's not like I'm I'm going in the ring and that when I get in there people feel bad for me you know what I mean it's like yeah I, I get it I, I see some guys that go in there and they they gotta use the ropes to help them up. And, you know, it's, 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 it's heartbreaking to see it, right? So I understand that. I'm not gonna get to that point, you know? As long as I can still do it and not embarrass myself or embarrass the fans, then I'm gonna keep doing it until I can't do it no more. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. This is where you set the table. Like you set the table for the match. Most of the night, uh, it was, seemed like the crowd was, was, you know, they were more paying attention rather than um, yelling and screaming, so it was more of a quiet, quiet crowd, but they were watching. So I felt like I'd go out there, you know, and not expecting uh, anything in return with some of the comments and some of the things that I were doing. And then when I got out there, it was like, they were all just kind of jumping in, they were saying stuff, I registered them, then all of a sudden they started saying, chanting the name, and they started doing, and it was just, I mean, I just reacted off them, and it was really good. And I was really happy with the response, man, definitely very happy. I'm gonna go eat, get some food, and uh, I'm gonna enjoy what it just happened and uh, feel good about everything up to this point, man. Peace out. Kurt Angle, this is the right way to do it, not this. Oh! 
Oh, there. Ah, ah, That's yeah. That's the right way to do it. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to know what it felt like, so I gave him a little bit of twist on there because that, that, if it's done right, it's a shoot. I mean, it works, so. I, I see the other guys putting on like Kurt Angle, some of these other guys put it on, and it's just, not, it's not right. <laughs> I see the crowd pop, and I go, man, that, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> I, I live in the moment, and right now the moment is here, but now I'm going to a press conference. Oops, somebody's gonna get pulled over. Look good. Thank you. Not bad for an old guy, make me a little, little upset. I'm not gonna, no, I'm not oh, good at all. Man, what are you heavy right now? Yeah, yeah, actually I am, yeah, and that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, you scare me at heavyweight. <laughs> What's up, man? All right. It's, it's difficult when you come from like, like Ken and, and Stefan to come from a, a, a fighting background and then they see him take a hit and they're like, the way over sell it because they're selling it like a pro wrestler would sell it. Well, that's not how it's done. You have to sell it like the way that you would sell it. So if that jab is only going to snap your head back a little bit, then take the little snap. You don't take the, oh my God, my nose. No, yeah. it's just a little jab. It's not going to kill you, Stefan. Like, what are you doing? It's not going to hurt you, Ken. And then taking that leg kick or you halfway chop, you don't limp off it. You're like, no, I chopped it and I'm going to come back with one of my own. And it's, it's very interesting to see how that. Realism now is being brought into different aspects and different sides of, of pro wrestling. Ken was probably 15 years too early, and I was 10 years too early uh, in fighting. We would have made a lot more money if we were just a little bit younger because there's more money in it now. Ken was way ahead of his time with Lions Den in fighting. It was unheard of to have a group like that, a bunch of gyms of guys that were doing all inclusive. It wasn't just a jiu jitsu academy, it wasn't just a boxing academy, it was all inclusive specifically to fight. It was 10 years too early. Nobody could grab onto it, nobody understood the concept. Now it is the concept. Ken's idea has always been this, this kind of this kind of mentality of like um, always trying to bring realism into things that are supposed to be not as realistic and he's always made it seem a lot better that way he's always done it better and now it's a good accolade to him like look this is the guy that started now he's able to do it even more hey man hey hey next time make sure your clients here man what is he afraid of me now i'm gonna he's already afraid to walk in here man that's why he's late man he's always late uh, see that's why he failed in the nfl he can't follow the rules yeah i'm a professional this guy's a cheap shot thank okay. you Ken. so if you guys can get together here maybe Exactly. I'm gonna kick your fucking ass. Bring it, bitch. Kick your fucking ass. Oh, 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 I know what I'm not waiting on, and that's for everybody else. See, I got my own agenda. And um, when that agenda presents itself, then I'll do what I need to do. Because it seems like everybody around here, they all don't know even for a second about how mad I am on the inside. I mean, this ain't playing. Wait. You wait. I'll get it. I'll get my revenge. Yeah, in a lot of ways, I think Ken's position in history is understated. Because if you look at it, I mean, here's a guy who was a pro wrestler, then became a shoot fighter in Japan. He was there in early UFC. He was a huge part of the Attitude Era. Like you saw, Dwayne The Rock Johnson tweets back and basically says, this is the guy that made me who I am. So this guy has affected so much. Really, he's such an integral part of the history of pro wrestling and MMA. There's very few that have as far-reaching effect across two sports like Ken has. Yeah, and that's one thing I don't think a lot of people realize was that when I, when I paved that road, there were consequences. And those consequences were I lost some of the people in my gym because they thought I sold out. 50% of the fans were thinking I sold out, that I was going into this fake pro wrestling. And there was a lot of heat on me. You know, there was some for me and there was some against me, but the ones that were against me, you heard more. And um, yeah, it was really, it wasn't easy. And I think I never allowed that to get to me. I never even talked about it, but I, people don't realize how hard it was for me to do that. And the fans that were loyal to me to turn on me, even some of my own fighters turned on me. My own brother, Frank, turned on me because I went into pro wrestling. But there was a few people in my gym that felt like I left them. Uh, and what they didn't realize was that I wasn't making the money I needed to make in fighting. 
And in order to support their gym, their house, their food, I had to go do something else to make that money. And so I didn't tell them that. I'm not gonna let them into my business and what my finances are. It's just not gonna do that. And so I did this because it was something I had to do. Once I was able to explain people and critique it to them, like, hey, this is no joke. These guys are athletes. And to do this is very, very difficult. And um, I was able to get that across over the years. And now when you see guys like Brock Lesnar and Ronda Rousey able to cross over, they don't have any of the amount of criticism that I had. Now, Ronda may because of the way she did it, you know, because she lost a fight. She didn't come back and try to defend it. You know, she kind of ran away. I don't think that. I think Ronda made the right decision. I think she did what she thought was best for herself, but from what other people said. So she did face some criticism, but not because she was going into pro wrestling. Whereas like I did, I lost a lot of things when I went into pro wrestling because people were bashing on me. I lost a lot of fan base, but it was worth it because I gained more fan base in return because I did make the move, but it took time. I remember thinking to myself, I belly to belly the guy, he hits, he rolls to his belly and I grabbed his into the ankle lock and I started putting it on him. After that, man, it was game. I said, that's my finishing hole. And I, I couldn't tell you when that happened, but I, like I said, first three months, it was like trying to find, okay, who am I? Um, how am I gonna wrestle? What moves are gonna work in pro wrestling? What moves won't work in pro wrestling? So it was fun to be able to kind of have that time to be able to go through all those things and then try to find that identity. And once it locked in, I think when I really, when I really figured out that um, the intensity of the world's most dangerous man was when I had the dog food match with um, Davy Boy. And I just, wow, I just lost it from belly to belly. It was, and I realized that's who I was. The intensity, the anger, the frustration, the desire, the hunger, everything that was rolled up into that moment, um, I realized, okay, that's who Ken Shamrock is in pro wrestling. Because all I had to do was get the guys to understand what I was doing. And once they understand what I was understood what I was doing, I could literally put these guys in holds because they didn't have to know how to do it. Because I was doing it. And they it's a shoot, right? So all they had to do was trust me, no matter what they did. And even if they didn't, I could forcefully put them in that hole without hurting them. And of course, once I put them in the hole, I eased up with it. So I gained enough trust after the first three months that a lot of guys said, okay, I'm gonna do this, and don't worry about what happens, just go with it. I'll get where I need to be. And, uh, and that's really how it was, is I just basically started shooting on guys with their permission. The Ken Shamrock the fighter is attitude, um, not as friendly. It's a whole different game, but there's also a time where you flip the switch because if you go into that ring and you're not focused, you can get hurt or you'll hurt someone. When you're standing there, man, you gotta be laser focused on your match.
funny when people say it's fake. Uh, it, 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 just, it just burns me because this is not what people think it is when we go in there and we're acting like characters. There's That stuff in there is still real. You have no idea how much these guys put themselves through to entertain the fans. I'm fine, dude. It, it does, takes nothing to cut me open nowadays, which is great for pro wrestling. The day you're putting razor blades in, do that, and I know you're really into wrestling, but my point is, I don't need to fucking do that. Like, I, I'll get hit like it would happen tonight. It's going to happen plenty. I've had this thing sew it at least 20 times, that, that cut right here. So, here a bunch, here a bunch, here a bunch, here a bunch. That same on this side a bunch, and under here. Pretty much it's a matching on here, here, here. All of them at least a dozen times each, and a couple up here and here and inside the mouth. Oh. Yeah, right? Bleed like a real American, baby. Red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Can I do one more? Can you see? Do we look ripped? <laughs> one, two, and It's a good feeling to know you're appreciated, you know, and I want the fans to know that, man, I really appreciate them, man. I really do appreciate that, and it makes you feel good. I'm on a cloud right now. I feel happy. I feel free. I feel like I'm starting to live life again. I'm relevant. You know, it just feels fun. I think the biggest thing, I'm just thankful for opportunity. You know, at my age, having the opportunity that I have to come back to impact and have an opportunity. I'm not saying it will happen, but I'll work hard. The opportunity to be able to chase the belt, you know? Biggest thing, man. I appreciate the opportunity.